learned a lot from that. <laughs> so, the, so he is now the operations manager at Alvin. Oh yeah. my goodness, wow. look at that. So you did a good job. <laughs> you probably knew, you just need to put him to the test, see how he handled the crisis. He's a smart, <laughs> smart trainer. Awesome, so this looks like an internodal? Acidid? Or nope, yeah, yeah. Bamboo. Um, Beautiful bamboo. Yeah, there's a couple, it's got sort of a boxy design on the base that makes me think of um, um, Arachinella weberi, but I'm not, I'm not sure if that's it. And I can't see the branching very well, but, oh, that's cool. That's excellent. That's a nice still, Kukui. Oh, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. A lot of viewers uh, commenting on uh, the fish we saw earlier as mm -hmm. uh, saying that according to Chris Kelly, who they've heard you know, a comment earlier and some of their own research, looks like a juvenile chonocops. They're actually grayish in color when they're oh. that small before they turn red. And I thought that's uh, interesting insights coming in from multiple viewers uh, around the world. We appreciate that. Wonderful. Yes, the Thank geologist you. got something right. Wow. <laughs> and then also, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, very proud. Oh, she's a quick Thank learner. Val's a quick learner. Awesome. Sometimes. Thank you. Awesome job. I mean, this is this is basically like full immersion, um, yeah. pun intended. Yeah, it is. So this is a good place to uh, pick up a little biology and uh, actually keep it in my oh, head. And we've Absolutely. got another fish. What did we decide those were? The, the conger eel? Still got to work on my fishes, though. Can't help you with that. I also, at one point I used to know more fish, and now now I have lower confidence. Okay, so for rock, rock o'clock here. <laughs> Uh, what are we looking at? Let's see, some of the stuff immediately in front of the porch is probably stuck to the substrate, but there's some stuff a little further up near some of these uh, urchins. As long as we don't disturb them, that would be okay. That looks unreachable, unreachable of course. <laughs> Maybe well, we that. that one. Please. Okay. I'm sure there's something in here. Yeah, I'm sure there's something here too. I'm just trying to look for something that's. Uh, and keep my sense of skill uh, yeah. reasonable, which right now it may not be. Well, let's see just how encrusted these pohanku are. That was another part of the question about rock falls, wondering oh, if beautiful. in these, yeah. nice. Wondering if in these talus fields, the, le the amount of manganese encrustation would prevent them from tumbling. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that does lock up uh, some of these faces, especially if you're talking like, you know, centimeters or more. Another tumbling snail. Yay. I love okay. those guys. These snails are so cool. They're still my favorite. <laughs> oh, bigger than we thought, maybe. Yeah, th probably once you get up to a couple centimeters of really good, like high quality, dense uh, uh, manganese crust, I imagine that keeps a lot of stuff intact, uh, especially at like this cobble to small boulder uh, size. Yeah. I mean, we definitely can't break it off. Um, so we tried that a couple times last year and just, yeah. Nice grab. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh. Yeah, look at that angularity. <laughs> that is a great rock. It certainly fits the description of what you've been asking for, definitely. Yep. Yeah, look. it looks like a thinner manganese crust on that one. Uh, that so it's like probably been broken off a little more recently. Inside of a pillow right there. Beautiful. Yeah, that's fantastic. Virginia, that fish we were seeing, could those be the grenadiers? Were those the uh, rat tails? Uh, which fish? Just that fish we saw earlier with the long tail, just just um, uh, a minute ago or so. Ready? So rat tails yeah, have slightly, view, okay. they have different I'll head shapes. Oh, got it. Um, uh, I thought it looked more like one of 
your title. I'm gonna say box E for this one, if you can. E? Yeah. E as an element, yeah. Perfect. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh bad. Of course the camera did that then. <laughs> 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 but it made it in the box. Still a perfect shot. Yeah. Beautiful. Excellent Hello, work. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Uh, confirming this was sample 053. Copy that. Awesome, thank you. Kukui, were there any other samples collected in the previous watch? Yeah. So, in the previous watch, eh, sorry, words, yeah. watch, mm -hmm. um, they did collect um, another rock with a cup coral um, that was attached to it. Um, they also collected that um, white young um, coral mm -hmm. that we saw a little bit before this ridge line. It was just lined with all these. Um, white branching corals that kind of mm -hmm. resemble stoloniferans or st stilasterids, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, I, th I think stilasterids, Sti but stilasterids. I'm not positive. We had, we also have some people thinking it was, um, there's many options. I don't think, I didn't get a good look at it. Yeah, but Sorry. yeah, that's, that's, I think, what we collected so far um, since the last time we came here. We, oh, we also collected a couple more Niskin samples, too. Awesome. Mahalo Kukui for the update. Yeah, mahalo you guys. Yeah, sounds like it's been a busy couple of watches since we were last on. Yeah, yeah. any room left, Kukui? Um, we all full? It depends. I think we can like fit another rock into box E, okay. another rock or two. Um, but it kind of gets hard to start. I'm um, starting to um, try and tell the rocks apart. I right, mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, <laughs> I, don't, I feel like um, Dr. Val and Hannah can, can identify each rock. Or, well, they can. But I, I, I can't. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kukui. Have we have we hit all of our biological sampling targets from this dive? Are you do you know? No, we haven't yet. We haven't come across um, any of our target sea stars, um, and we're also still looking for um, a couple more species of glass sponges, um, and also our jellies. But these are also targets yeah. for across the entire yeah. cruise, not just per dive. Yeah, right, not just yeah. for this this dive, yeah. Yeah, we had no idea what we were going to encounter here. I know, so. it's so exciting. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in this tallest pile, rock-wise, you, you can see a few cobbles that are like really, really rounded. Those tend to be the kind of samples that we would avoid picking up, um, although those may well be glued to the uh, seafloor anyway because those are probably more likely to have like a chunk of hyaloclastite or something in them instead of uh, uh, a, uh, a fragment of a lava flow. Robert, are you ready to get us uh, moving? I am get ready, yeah. All right. Great, now. And the manganese crusts tend to generally follow the morphology of whatever they're coating, so uh, being very rounded, tells us that whatever is inside is probably very rounded and probably a much less resistant, more easily weathered, more alterable rock. So it's a little bit, a little, maybe a lot harder to work with uh, as far as uh, like uh, uh, geochemical fingerprinting like we're trying to do in order to understand the origins of these seamounts. And so, that, um, that ferromanganese, that iron and manganese, those are just, uh, you know, deposits, mineral deposits in the in the uh, water column that settle onto those rocks creating that coat or is there a chemical reaction that's uh, taking place there i'm uh, pretty sure it's a chemical reaction oh, um, cool. so yeah uh, you'll have uh, manganese iron and stuff uh, uh, that is dissolved in the water column and uh, it uh, basically uses those rock surfaces as nucleation points Okay. Uh, kind of like how you grow uh, uh, rock candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with, oh, uh, wow. with uh, dissolved sugar. Awesome. These grow extremely slowly. So uh, on average, you're talking growth rates on the order of like a few millimeters per million years. Yeah. So. So a couple uh, centimeters means pretty old, pretty old rocks. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So, yeah, I, I use those as sort of a general field identifier of, you know, it, are, are the rocks old or not? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get an exact age out of uh, uh, the thickness of a manganese crust because uh, 
th those rates vary from a little bit from place to place, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not even convinced that um, the uh, crustal growth is a constant process. It may be a little bit more episodic. Sure. Uh, so it's it's more of a binary of is is the rock old or not, than rather how old is how it old based is it? on this field observation. Makes That's sense. just not something you can uh, do, at least not with our current knowledge about manganese crusts. And they can have some different uh, textures too. Some are really, uh, really solid, really strong, compact, dense. Uh, other times, you know, you get some stuff that has a, you get some crusts that have uh, like a pore space in them, and they look a little bit. They, they have uh, some, uh, uh, some portion of them are a little bit more orange in color uh -huh. uh, among the black, and uh, they can be. Those can be like really fragile or easy to split. Um, which uh, definitely makes a mess in the lab uh, that I, uh, I'm always working hard to contain. Um, mm -hmm. It makes them hard to stow, too. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even in the Lao Basin uh, some years ago, we were picking up some uh, uh, some young rocks, very young rocks, uh, uh, from the uh, Mata Volcanic Field. And uh, we knew that they had erupted sometime within you know, the last couple of years, and most like uh, a couple hundred years, and most likely in the last couple of decades. Wow. Uh, and we brought them on board, and some of these had a very tiny, very fragile, friable um, manganese coat on the, their surfaces that just got everywhere. <laughs> it came so, right off. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised to see that on such a young rock, and, and something that was uh, clearly like very, very geologically fresh, like no alteration that I could see whatsoever, and it had a little bit of manganese. That so that makes me think that it had something to do with uh, uh, basically the local water chemistry being altered by whatever, like maybe hydrothermal system or something coming out of uh, a nearby volcanic vent that um, increased that, that metal, that transition metal load uh, dissolved in the seawater there. And maybe that was a very local deposition event. Yeah. Yeah, chemical deposition. Yeah, so. that's fascinating to yeah, think. It like, makes it, you know, it just yeah. makes the story more complex, which is what I love. Yeah, it's, uh, all sorts of questions there. So. It means awesome. we have to keep looking and keep trying to understand. It's right. harder to get answers. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else we want in this location? Uh, nope, I think we're good to go. Awesome. Sorry, I get a little distracted no. talking about the rocks. Rocks <laughs> are important. Rocks, rocks. <laughs> Give everyone a chance to, you know, catch their breath and. Absolutely. Get ready for this next jump. Mm -hmm. We're just starting to move. So mainly hoping some sea stars reveal themselves, sea stars of some particular varieties, mm -hmm. according uh, to what's left for us to potentially sample. But uh, Kanaloa has already been generous. Mm -hmm. So many great yes. pohaku, so many amazing biological samples helping us understand this sacred and special realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a truly remarkable dive. Seeing the change in, in abundance and diversity um, between the coral taxa and the sponge taxa, as well as the associates um, from when we started this we started this dive at 2,665 meters um, to now at, you know, 1,225 meters. We've had several changes in um, communities uh, that I have noticed where we've gone from sort of, I think we've gone from some bamboo dense, we've had some uh, paragorgid dense communities. We've had some more sponge dense communities as well. It's been really interesting to see these changes throughout this dive, as well as the changes in the associated geology and the rock type, as well as sediment amount and type. And it's it's pretty fascinating. You know, at the beginning of this, we had very strong currents on our last watch that made it actually pretty difficult to move. And now we're we're still seeing some of those corals, but we're 
to my knowledge, this is a this is a less a lower current um, area. What do we have here at the top <laughs> of the screen? Wow. Oh. Like, I'm wondering if this is. Oh wow, you can see it in Atlanta. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. It's like we're also, getting into uh, a lot of more stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Of portals. I know. <laughs> yeah. Imagine we'll heating that thing. <laughs> Just yeah, heating it. So that's amazing. Yeah. Well, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. As long as her comes back, right? <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. we'll get in trouble. <laughs> Would you be able to zoom in just a uh, just partially on this and move up? we I think yep. there is, seems to be a lot more sediment in this water, so oops, yeah, zooming in might give us more of that clear view that we're kind of used here, yeah. to without. Uh, yeah, wow. You can come up somewhere. I think I'm seeing yeah. a lot of stolen. You think? I I I'm I'm not positive if it's stolen ifrins or just like a bajillion. Oh my okay. god. Those yeah, because we saw some of those earlier. Yes. Yeah. We, we definitely have but seen I'm not, some. I'm, I'm not quite oh, seeing the lineations yet. Yeah. yeah, and we've got a lot wow. of sponges. Oh, wow, Lots of it looks sponges. like. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. It looks like cup corals. They're not, I'm not oh. seeing any of the lines that would connect stolen ifrins. We're looking at the little white. Little, little. Are those yeah. crabs or squat lobsters? Oh. What are those? We've got some squat, got some squat lobsters, lobsters in there as well. All those white squat lobsters. Wow. wow. Kind of orange one. Wow. Look at all this. Yeah, those do look like cup corals. Mm -hmm. Good spot. Wow. Oh. This is incredible. Yeah, oh, wow. this is amazing. Man, cup coral city. Almost want to say yeah. one pulley. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Oh. That's fantastic. And the shape of the Pohaku, too. I'm still fascinated yeah. ever since we touched bottom last so night. So many of yeah, these. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Mahalo kanaloa. Yeah, That's we're right. seeing all sorts of wild Pohaku's cooling structures here. Are those Saranthas growing on that? Crescent Sorry? Are those the zoanthids that to the left growing on that? Are these? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, I th actually think those might be, that might be a really small um, plexorid, but I'm having a hard time with it too. There's so many, so many different things here to look at. It's pretty amazing. So they're probably a different species, but those white squat lobsters remind me a lot of the ones that we see on uh, active hydrothermal vents. Right, they look a lot like them, but there are yeah. several. There are several um, Galatheid right. squat lobsters. Yeah, I figured this, they These have are zoanthids, and that might yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, that, yeah, on top of that, mm -hmm. Chrysogorgia with that squat so lobster is on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a different. Yeah, all coral. this yellow is just a whole bunch of zoanthids growing on top of each other. Oh, hey, on buddy. top of this. Yeah, that's wild. There's so much going on here. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. I love the cl I love what the zoomed in view, and I love the zoomed out Around view. Around the cup coral, is those yeah. hold fast of some sort? I'm not sure. The could be any number of, of organisms that leave little kind of curled yeah. things. Yeah, yeah these the are the squat yeah. lobsters you're talking yeah. about. Right? Yeah, they have yeah. to be a different species they because are. You're, you also can't see any fuzz on any of their arms or right. underbellies. So those are um, there are just uh, Galatheids. That's a potty that too, right? I mean, there's there's no way there would be an active hydrothermal vent Some here. Some kind of crab, I yeah. think, as well. It, this this oh, has yeah, been long extinct. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sea mounts reactivate sometimes, right. but yeah, this is not the area okay, where that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. yeah. We're in tight diameter. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. So I think those crabs are, um, yeah, Munidopsis, Munidopsidae. Probably Whoa, species of crab. Oh, yeah, that's wow. amazing. Wow. This is yeah. stunning. Oh my gosh. Ooh, it looks like jewels. Like Where are we? Somebody opened a portal. Kind of we have Ryan's really tired. Yeah. 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 Walking on a scary wall. Cave. <laughs> <laughs> we are, Robert. You're doing yeah. a great job Thank climbing. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Also, our navigator, Catalina, also Atlanta pilot, Zach. Yeah. Our oh, video engineer giving us the camera. Did you see Star? Wow. wow. I don't think it's one that's on our list, but that Probably is a not. beautiful one. It's beautiful. Looks like one of the ones oh, we saw yeah, earlier that was uh, yeah. eating some coral. Mm -hmm. All the highlights the are just faster. labeled portal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> portal. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I don't think it's. Yeah. It's a little oh, too wide. It's, yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. Be nice. This Be is nice. pretty amazing. But it still looks like Oops. another Goniastrid star, yeah. Yeah, I think wow. it. I, I think it is another. Yeah. Going this is just coral. mind blowing. Yes, it is. The density what is that happening we're right here. now? And the the density of the cup corals with the sponges, and these are several different species of sponges. Um, 
And we've got several species of corals and uh, basket stars overlaying. It's, this is amazing. I, yeah. I'm sorry to be a bit silly, but you all remember the scene in Moana when Maui jumps down into the realm of monsters? I love it. And, I love he, and it. He, him and Moana land in the realm of monsters to go mm -hmm. see Tamatoa. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! No jumping Ma over Mahina's the side. Like, I, 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 that movie's ridiculous. <laughs> no, this no, is no. what it looks like. This yeah. is what it looks like. I don't down remember. There. Well, and it would be oh because that was, if I'm remembering correctly, there was a lot of sort of bioluminescent, you wow. know, vibrant colors. And if you, if we turned, if um, you know, without the lights on it, a lot of these animals would probably be able to bioluminesce. Oh my gosh! Probably wow. a large portion. Which is pretty amazing, yeah. The realm of I monsters. Mean, That's what I'm now this labeling. Awesome. This has almost everything on it. It's just the colors that we're seeing. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've got several pairs of anthids as well as um, those corals. Yeah, if, if we're continuing to move slowly, which I love, um, <laughs> could we get a zoom on this as we move? Oh I want a gosh. 3D model of this. We need a th we need to do some photogrammetry. It, it, it took several hours to do that, probably. <laughs> but yeah, I, I oh, totally amazing. agree. Having a 3D rendering of this would be just incredible. Can we come back, please? Can yeah. we come back? Oh wow, there's a baby, there's like a small baby coral in there too, but we can keep uh -huh. all the anemones. Yeah. The large corals where we'll figure out what exactly it is. But wow. That's amazing. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, we can keep moving. Let's do it. That's great. Yep. Wow. Stunning. Oh this is gosh. absolutely spectacular. Whoa. <laughs> Oh wow, we were really zoomed in. Oh. I hadn't realized that. <laughs> yeah. We were at maximum zoom. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's right. You can see we're like on the wall. Right. And yeah. No, that's can't excellent. see Herc, so we need to get up. Yeah, Herc fell behind it, paddling into a little bit. Wow. Amazing job piloting. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is amazing. And uh, it looks like the current's starting to mess with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're up there in the tops of the trees again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're at about uh, 1,200 meters depth. So this is kind of within that range where uh, uh, we have been seeing this broader scale pattern of abundant uh, 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 colonization. But yeah, this is something else. It's the ancestors, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're all having a party here. Yeah. We're having a great time. Yeah, it looks like the current's coming right off the top and then down the slope. Okay. At us. You know, we're going into it, which is good. Yeah, what's the easiest, this is, easiest way this for you? This is much better than having it to the side. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I think, I mean, it, am I correct that this, the plan is to just continue up this? Yep. Great. Yep. Great. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, look at, look at how highly polished everything is, it's too. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a prevailing current direction. Yes. It's been doing this for a while. Yeah. Virginia, Aridogorgia in front of us? Right yeah, in the middle? Yeah, I think yeah, so. The beautiful spiral mm -hmm. right there. You're doing great. Yeah. Studying up, mm -hmm. studying up. That looks like uh, potentially a uh, black coral. I think oh. bathypathies yeah. was the last one that we saw that looked similar to that. Yeah, oh, bathypathies cool. are usually pretty much exactly like that one, so I would I would agree. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, another beautiful aridogorgia right there. Mm -hmm. I love their patterns. Yeah. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't seen too many black corals. No, today. we haven't. Um, I, I missed uh, I missed the other two shifts almost entirely, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they saw any. They saw some. They saw some bathypathies. Okay. Um, those are those are corals that black corals that have a single. They're right. very. And they have that very distinctive. Very kind of distinctive -like shape. Symmetrical. Yes. Very fern-like symmetrical branching. Um, they often have a pretty distinct color too. Pretty much a vibrant orange, yeah, to my oh, knowledge. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really great. They look like a like a fern to me almost. Mm -hmm. Me too. They do. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how the the ferns, how they can, how you can have different organisms living in such different environments that look so similar. 
Uh, do I see some of those yeah. neon yellow corals coming you up? You do yeah, see some like neon like yellow. It's not nearly Ooh. as steep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what yeah. are those neon yellow corals again? Um, there are a couple of neon yellow corals here. Those ones are reminding me of Analopsamias. Wow, look how Analopsamia bright Analopsamia rostrata. Uh, and actually, I think I would Saving. say that that is Analopsamia rostrata. Um, yeah, all of a sudden, just bam, we're yep, in we like are different coral populations. 1,200 meters, and uh, uh, looks like we've got some Analopsamia rostrata. And that one's interesting looking. Yeah. <laughs> Asako agrees, we need some zooms here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely some different Analopsamia ristratas. Um, I think there's one that's like orange, that's like Amphilodes, but. Uh, Nav, are we able to hold here for a couple of zooms for a few minutes, or? Uh, yeah, I ju did you want just zooms? Are we thinking a sample? I just put in the move. It's going to take a minute to Okay, just, um, zoom. just some zooms. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if we, we could get a zoom on this light orange one on the, just a, just below where this we are. This one right, yeah, down there. Over there? Yeah. Oh. I'm at uh, yeah. max. We're yeah, consulting with Asako, too. Just, um, yeah. You want the yellow this, ones in the This orange or one here would be great. It's a beautiful rock wall. I'm just imagining this mm -hmm. hike. It's like, oh, this would be a yeah. mm -hmm. this would be a beast of a hike. It'd be a yeah. lot of fun. It out. would be. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks it's a pretty unique branching style. It looks like an Analopsamia, but Analopsamias have branching only on one side. Um, um, Asako confirms that this is the first sighting of this coral on this dive. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I think it is actually still an Analopsomia, but it's just maybe rotated its arms around. Polyps so. retracted? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you for that zoom. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I think all of these are new to this. All of these Analopsomia are, this is look the first shape for too. this dive. Yeah. Usually analopsomias oh. look like this. One side of them is completely flattened. And you can see that down here. But it looks like the top portion here sort of has switched around, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. Did we want to get a look at one of those yellow corals? Um, if we have time? Yeah, I mean, we could. Um, I think we saw some of those last year, too. Yeah, there's there have been several um, on the other seamounts. Yeah. Of these bright yellow Doesn't ones. I just find them so striking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can, move, we can move on if you want to. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, the yellow yeah, analopsomias. Yeah, we've seen that before. We've oh. seen those. I still think they're cool. They're cool. <laughs> they are very cool, like, and like, they're, they are vibrant. The, they like are the fact vibrant. that you just get yes. some of these neon colors now and again mm -hmm. uh, in the deep sea. Yeah. Uh, the same with some of those uh, bolosoma sponges. Oh, yeah? Yeah, those giant, uh, we, we would call them uh, mm -hmm. cheese wheels or. <laughs> Cheese oh, moon. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We, we saw a lot of those last year. I might say that. I haven't seen any yet uh, this time around, but we still have a lot of expedition left. Just about half. Cool. Half the expedition, yeah. all the Moana Kauli Unreal. expedition, the deep sea travelers going for a couple mm -hmm. more weeks out here in Papahanaumokua Kea. And. Um, if we didn't see anything else, if we were blindfolded for the rest of the two weeks, this expedition would still have been yeah. stunning yes. and, and worth wow, it. Wow, this Most place is amazing. Yeah. Also, if um, if we do have time for, oh no, those are those are yeah, actually on, um, uh, this one would actually be great. I mean, the yellow one would be cool too, but this one's what I really <laughs> <laughs> this one's what I really don't know. That one, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know what that one is. This one, I'm okay. not positive about. Blowing off the yellow one. <laughs> Okay, Asako says that the pathy-pathies that we saw was the first observation at the beginning of this watch. Um, we we saw some others. Um, okay. They were just on the side of the last um, uh, the last one. Okay. I'm Got not it. sure if it was um, noted. Noted. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. Dark Lab's going to have their work cut out yes. for them again. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we're about to. It's okay if we don't have the tether for it. 
Oh, we do. We're good. Okay. Awesome. All right, zoom in. Zoom in. Uh oh, we're falling. Three. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You didn't get a good foothold. Yeah, those manganese crests look a little slippery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, can we zoom in? You got any more leash to get me? I'm getting yanked off. I'll zoom down a little bit. Is that a little black it. coral? No. That's yes. a lot of polyps. That is a lot of polyps. Are we at full zoom? We are. Mm, excellent. Yeah, okay. Those might, that might be a black coral. Yeah. Oh, that might be a green thing. A green thing, ah, yes. <laughs> Val is looking for the green things. <laughs> that little on the side of the wall. Yeah, yep. we have no idea what those are. Yeah. And we tried to sample one last year and... Wonderful, yeah. awesome, thank you for that zoom. Yeah, mahalo nui. Not really something you can sample. No. Cause okay. it's like okay. a really thin film. Yeah. 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 yeah, let's yeah, get we moving. Can, we can get moving, tool. yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's good, we, s we haven't seen a lot of these yet this dive, so it's good to get a good few of them before we move on. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just have to make one SpongeBob reference real quick. Please There's a do. lot of yellow yes. sponges, and it reminds me of the episode when he goes to rock bottom. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's dark everywhere. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob references are welcome as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Oh, Asako said it's possibly Swiftia. Great. Mm. I love that name, Swiftia. Swiftia, yeah, it's Swiftia. a really wonderful name. Oh, this is such a dramatic landscape. These rock mm -hmm. formations are incredible. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Such brightly colored, vi look at this, vibrantly colored coral. Yeah, oh yeah, more, more of those Enolopsomias. You know, I have a shirt that color. <laughs> you do? A couple, actually. For riding your bike at night? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Partly, yeah. Yeah. And when I was in my marching band days, uh, the uh, at Michigan State, the trombones were usually put up at the front so I wouldn't, like, whack anybody by mistake. Um, so we pulled a prank one fall in practice where we got a bunch of uh, shirts made up that color so that everybody during practice and we all wore them on the same day yeah everybody in practice had to deal with that <laughs> trombone so we just players. had a very oh a very God. neon uh trombone <laughs> section that That's awesome. everybody else behind us was grumbling about our, our drill coordinator came along <laughs> just laughing at us mid-practice said you guys don't need those shirts to stick out in the drill <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> so i have a soft spot for bright yellow things <laughs> i love it Wow, there are a lot of these yellow analopsomias in here. That's pretty wild. Is that a sticking sponge? out like a trombone section? <laughs> <laughs> Twelve o'clock sponge. What is this? Oh, that is a little bit larger than the Walteria sponges. Wait, I was just. I feel like Walterias can get. Can they get large? I mean, they can get large, yeah. Um, but I don't. I think um, usually the Walterias have a. Um, I oh. think I would call this a euplectelid um, sponge. Okay, so that may not have been a Swiftia. Sako is now leaning toward black coral. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. just making sure you got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. No worries. Yeah. I, all, I, I really want to oh say gosh. a lot of these other sponges we're seeing, like these big face ones, remind me a lot of polyopagons, but I know they're not, I think. <laughs> these, this is an amazing color it looks actually. like we're at the top of the slope here yeah. flattening out just stunning wow 
Wow. Oh. Can we actually get the laser lights turned off for a couple moments here while we go through this? <laughs> this is so surreal. That is a monster sponge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it feels like a Dr. Seuss world right now. <laughs> it, it does. does. <laughs> it totally That's does. What I was thinking. We are just being transported in space time to a completely different dimension. I don't know where I am, who I am, <laughs> what's happening right now. But it is the 8 to 12 watch, greatest watch of all time. If you're joining us <laughs> yes, on um, YouTube or Nautilus Live, thank you. Can you, you. Zoom on This is uh, spectacular. Oh, we know all the, oh my goodness. all the viewers yeah, at home. Zoom in on that. I hope you're crying like me. <laughs> you know, this makes me think of that conversation the other night about dreaming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dream state. Yeah. 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 You go into Poe and you're transported into a different realm. It's a different consciousness, and I feel like there's a, a different connection between different Ho'ailona signs, natural phenomenon um, that we are revealed with, if so privileged to be given that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have been incredibly fortunate, and I can just, I mean, speaking for myself, I feel incredibly fortunate to have witnessed what we have within the past week alone and then to come out of these marine archaeological dives and then just see the abundance and the life that's you know only a 10 hour transit up from where we were um it's a gift the it ocean, is ocean knew exactly what we needed and well, delivered and yeah we can't say we deserve yes. it but it comes with a kuleana too it yeah, most it's, definitely it's a, does it's a privilege and a responsibility yeah. to uh Continue doing all we can to care for this. What a spectacular place. Yeah, yeah. to care yeah. for this, protect it, manage it, and then also share it too. I mean, for all of the people watching, mahalo, but we just have to go out into our own communities to uh, reach all of the keiki within our own lives, the children, and inspire them and know that, you know, encourage them that they can witness this. Let them know where they come from yeah. so that yeah. they can come back to it. This is amazing. <laughs> what a story. Yeah, it's a big part of their legacy. Mm -hmm. Our legacy, too. Most yeah, to pass that on is one of the greatest things we can do. Yeah. <laughs> looking at Atalanta Cam, at. it just, it just uh, keeps going. Well, thank you for reminding me. I need to capture that highlight yeah. from Atalanta Cam. It's absolutely stunning. I can't do my job anymore. Somebody. <laughs> It is. You know, it kind of makes me think, too, is one of our previous conversations on a different watch. It's like, if you could share this with any person, you can share this with your favorite teacher, one of your most influential mentors, or your favorite niece or nephew or grandson or granddaughter, your mo'opuna, your grandchildren. It's like, those are all of the people that I know I would want to share this mm. with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say a, a happy belated to my niece, Lena. She's a big fan of Nautilus and has been for a oh. long time, so. Oh, I love it. Happy birthday. Yes, holy. Yeah. Holy Happy birthday. Oh, Can, we zoom out? Can yeah. I jump on the birthday bandwagon? My, my son's birthday is coming up. Many of you guys know that. And I, I wrote him a note that so his teacher could read it to him tomorrow. And I won't share the whole thing, but I did say, Aloha, son. I'm writing to you from Pole, the realm of all ancestors and of all future generations. It is not a realm of the darkness of despair. It is a growth, an expansion, a gift. It has been a place where I can remember that I am here because of you and for you. And uh, what a sentiment. So sh big shout outs to anyone celebrating birthdays, another lap around the sun. We zoom in on that. And uh, here's to life. Aola. Yeah. Aola. Oh, These are incredible beautiful. words for your son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mahalo for sharing that with us, Dan. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for letting me. And I know he's going to look back on that too. Years years from now, you know, he's going to be a 25-year-old man someday and know that those words came from you and from the sacred space. Mahalo, man. Amazing to be reminded of just our small place and amongst the generations, uh, amongst mm -hmm. 
you know just the, the thousands tens of thousands of people that we come from and, and the thousands that will come from us um, we hold such magic we can this this portal is for us it's a gift for us and It's amazing too when that realization comes together with the science and the questioning and the curiosity and the technology and this team is uh, such a testament to that. This whole time, just been blown away by you, eight to twelve. This is amazing. You guys are, you guys are look really at that awesome. You yeah. just look at it. You belong here. We do. Yeah. Both yeah. Herc and Adelina Cam. Is, Holy yeah. cow! It's so amazing. Can we get a view on some of these yellow corals now? I'm, I like them more. Grown on you, huh? I sit vindicated. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Is that another bathy bathies right in front of it? Um, you know, actually, that that looks. It looks like there might be two branches there, so it might not be. I will double check. Virginia, I love, I love so much how you you carry and hold so much knowledge, and yet you just keep digging, keep learning, growing your expertise. It's just oh, absolutely, you never awesome know everything. Awesome to watch. Awesome to watch. Forever a lifelong learner. Ayo. Yeah. Ayo. If you know everything, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> From oh, Dr. That's Bell interesting. Herself. This is another one of those analopsamias that have um, the branches. Um, they're not all, it's not planar anymore. The, the branching has come around somewhat and created a more multi yeah, it's folding, planar it's branching. Folding in. So what, what does that imply about the growth of that coral? It's different than what we thought. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's wild. I wasn't uh, sure if that had any like implications for like changes in currents over time or something like that. I mean, it could. It could it just could, be growth, I it, guess. It could be. It could also be that it broke off and it started regrowing. It's, um, mm. You know, it's pretty interesting. There's there's many thought processes on these corals specifically. So that sounds like a fascinating um, discussion. <laughs> it can yeah. be, yeah. There are there can be fields of these too, and they can see the neon yellow corals mm -hmm. are coming through for you. No, they are. <laughs> they are very cool. They are very cool. I <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't worry. I'm just needling you. <laughs> you know, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm, it's I'm good. kidding. <laughs> it's interesting actually that we see the yellow ones right next to these orange ones as well. Um, I think there's the some thought that they're, um, where did it, where did it go? Um, what are you looking for? Different corals. Can you zoom out? Yeah, kind of wide. Mm-hmm, awesome. I can't wow, remember exactly, but. Oh, can we get the laser lights back on? Wow. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, is that branching? Yeah, it looks like there's two of them at the bottom there, which means again? it might it might still be bathypathies, but it's not um, the yeah, bathypathies that I that was something that we were on the hunt for brain. last year, but we didn't really see. Um, Asako, do you remember anything about this? Uh, so yeah, that is one. That is one branch. Huh. That is one coral. Um. Thousands of years in uh, mm -hmm. darkness, un unvisible to the human eye, way out of our reach, completely. But uh, just beautiful, waiting, yeah. waiting to reveal itself when uh, some might say humanity needed this kind of beauty the most. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, what a gift. That's pretty stunning. These delicate organisms are at such deep depths and inaccessible to the mass public for good reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, we got a good thing going here. Let's keep it, <laughs> keep it intact. <laughs> so terrifying to think that uh, part of our mission was to see if uh, this place was being damaged by uh, deep sea trawling, trawling. and uh, yeah. recognizing that we'd we have to tread so much more lightly than uh, yeah. than our yeah. our business plans that. suggest. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We can about time to get moving again. We can move on. Yeah. 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 This is cool.
Yeah, speaking of trolling, that is yeah. something we still have to uh, assess yeah. once we get a little higher up. Yeah, yeah, I do think that black coral is a schizopathidae. Um, okay. Potentially a telepathies, but unsure. I mean, seeing all of this beautiful life too, and just imagining a, imagining a trawler going through here is devastating. Right, absolutely. Um, oh my gosh, look at all yep. this. Yeah, it, it's. And there's not very many fish either. So right, yeah, yeah. It's because you scare them all away, Robert. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yep. I'm just yeah, kidding. Robert, did you see the that. Dumbo octopus on la last watch saw? Did you get a glimpse of that? I did not. It was, ma it was as big as me, Robert. Oh, Dumbo octopus was big as me. <laughs> <laughs> fish, there was just one on the left side. There was yeah. one what? There was a fish just on the left oh, side. Fish. Just barely. For a second, I thought second. you were saying there was an octopus. I was like, and you didn't stop us? <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't be making much more of a big deal out of an octopus. Exactly. That's, I, uh, I would hope so. They are yeah. Nautilus' favorite. I yeah. would walk out. I'm just, if, if, if we see one, I'm just out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in the ocean. That's yeah. it. Had enough. This is amazing. Don't deserve this. It's too yeah, good Mahina, a treatment. Yeah, to your point, um, mm -hmm. it, I, I always question uh, the dredging efforts that we do for mm -hmm. geological cruises too, because we, we try to get as deep down as we can where um, we're less likely to encounter communities like this. But occasionally we do bring up, you know, a piece of coral or um, yeah. or uh, some small right. animal. And yeah, I, I know that we are disrupting some of that there. And mm -hmm. It's, it's a very difficult thing to reconcile as a geologist yeah. because there are certain advantages to, you know, there are, there are certain advances to the science that happen directly as a result of using uh, a dredging approach over an ROV. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, ethically, it's kind of a weird place to be in. Yeah. Have to tread lightly. You do, our, uh, yeah. Our, our science and economics and politics don't align with... Uh, with exactly how we should be treating some of the unknown, mm -hmm. and uh, makes it tricky. But we're get we're we're taking some really powerful steps. I've been so impressed with OET, with Ocean Exploration mm -hmm. Trust, with Nautilus, all of you, of mm -hmm. course, but the whole organization and effort, all of the expeditions, yeah, moving us forward in the right direction. Yeah, and these are conversations that we have had a little bit, and that oh. we need to have and continue to have. We need to get a zoom on some of these corals here. Uh, okay. Sorry. Run the wrong way. If 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 possible. Um, wow. Oh, there's doing? there's also some of them over here. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, this is a particular morphotype that I was not expecting to see. Oh, really? Although I could be wrong. We still have to zoom in. No, it's still worth the zoom. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, zoom in. We're looking at the white one there with the lady? The orange ones. These clumps. Okay. Oh my goodness. So can you talk a little bit about uh, why this morphotype might be unexpected here? I gotta look at the branching first. Okay. <laughs> We're just being impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia's having a moment. We are we <laughs> are actually <laughs> all having a moment because yeah. this we would be an expansion of range too, I think. Oh, okay. This, if I am looking at this correctly, which I think I am, then this would be Solana Smilia variabilis, which is another Scleractinian reformer that creates large reefs in the South Pacific and Atlantic, um, and looks vibrant and healthy right here. Wow. Way, what are we at? About 1,200 meters. So 1200 way, meters. way, well, maybe not way below, but yeah, pretty far below. What's typical for these? I mean, this is a this is far outside of the range in the North Pacific for these corals, if I am correct in identifying it, which I might not be. Is this something you would want to get a sample? Yeah, of? this this would this would be um, a collection, and then also a, a do we have us a, a water for a water sample? Do we have a niskin as well? I think we have one niskin left. Yeah. Oh, it says, yeah, we have two. Oh. Yeah, the last one we did was three, I think. It's three? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. we have two, okay. we have two yeah. left. So these will be really crunchy. Um, yeah. yeah, no, 
I'm right. definitely seeing this as Selena Smiley. This is the exact patterning that we see elsewhere. Okay, yeah, let's do this then. Oh my goodness. We, this uh, is breaking my brain. You know, I've had those before and, uh, you know, sometimes you just like, you see something or something just kind of slots into place in your head and you're like, I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> Are you having one of those moments right now? I mean, a, li a little bit. No, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's this one of the best uh, parts about science is this, when... It's kind of unreal. Um, all right, we gotta find a place where we can set down. Here. All right, awesome. Yeah. It looks like there's more of them back here. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, though. there's a lot yeah. around here. That's not helpful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're having this problem where it's a little too dense. I know. Yeah. This yeah. is this is really interesting. Um, so a lot of these, a lot of these vibrant yellow for anyone at home, these vibrant yellow and some of the orange corals that I've been calling analopsomia, as well as these. Um, orange Selenosmalia, Selenosmalia corals that I got really excited about. They, these are um, hard corals, they're scleractinian corals, which means that they're, the thought is that their depth range where they are happy and healthy is pretty much, is um, limited somewhat by uh, the water chemistry. Huh, um, okay. And so for the, f the flat, the fan-shaped analapsamias, um, you know, the thought is that kind of thought that is that they're they're younger or, or not younger but they're not creating the dense um, reefs that you see and so they can be you know sort of a, a lower than um, than elsewhere but um, these singular Solana smilia um, to my knowledge we don't see them in pockets like this very often okay um, now I'm not familiar with uh, the South Pacific and and that is that is where these are these form very dense, um, very dense blankets over seamounts in the South Pacific. Um, there have been a lot of trawling studies, um, okay. and and in there actually a lot of that starts about the 1,000 meter depth zone. They have gotcha because um, I've dredged in the South Pacific, uh, mm -hmm. but um, at you know, like four or five kilometers. Right. So yes. I've never seen anything like that come yeah. in, and I never would have known. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I think I, I'm not certain what their depth range is in the South Pacific, but yeah. in the North Pacific, I know. Yeah, it, this is hey, pretty buddy. interesting um, for me. It could. I mean, it could also be that I am not. I mean, I am no expert in this, but. Um, well, still. You know, for anybody yeah. watching this online, this is like, yeah. this This is one of the best yeah. moments to be a scientist where suddenly just something mm -hmm. happens, you know, you learn something or you see something in your data where it just kind of shifts your paradigms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes you think about something differently. And we love having those uh, uh, challenged by things we observe in nature. So right. this is awesome. Are you getting this good shots on the still cam too? Yep. Cool. Okay. More? Yeah, three of us have still cam up right now. <laughs> Guaranteed Kukui has about 40 million great shots. And if you uh, make that still cam Come a little on. more full screen, I can put it in stat three for our viewers, too. What? Uh, I'm talking to the back row. Oh. Oh. Yeah, make it full screen. We have more zoom? Can we confirm the uh, species name for Asako? Can we also spell it too, Kat? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Thank you. So what's the plan here? So, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm also yelling, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. We're sciencing, Robert, um, we're sciencing back here. Okay. Yeah, so this this is, um, wow, it's cool, because it's also kind of, anyways, um, so this is going to be kind of crunchy, yep. and it will fall apart, and as you can see, there's a tons of kind of small branches, so it's yep. going to look, um, I think it's going to be, it can be a very difficult one. Um, yep. you, you grabbed that Madripoora before with that, grab and um, suction. The issue here is I think it's going to get stuck. caught. Yeah. Um, so, um, so would we, we have we, a forward? Could we open a basket or something before we collect the sample? Yeah, How? Do, is the front open? 
Like, do we have room in the front for this? I think we have room. It's just a bunch of rocks. Um, are you afraid it's going to get crushed? Uh, what, what's in, is there anything in oh, this Oh, an Omega? One? Oh, yeah. Look at that. A whole Ford bio box open. Mm -hmm. Okay, that <laughs> Look works. Look at that. An Omega? <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Just make sure we don't get yanked off. Yep. Yeah, keep the slack on it because I don't want to get yanked off. This is gonna, gonna take off like a rocket ship if we get yanked. Throw a little bit lower then. Uh, process is challenging, requires a lot of skill from Robert and concentration. We're going to be mm -hmm. silent, also in reverence and respect. This beautiful coral. Okay, can we zoom out a bit? Fragile stuff. Mm -hmm. Can we zoom in? Are there? You can zoom in more. Sorry about that. Okay, can you get the box open? Yep. That was a, no, not that box, the other box. Oh, 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 my bad. this one real quick. Uh, which one is it? Uh, I've done this tool one. Tool tray? Yet. Tool tray? Okay. There you go. And Omega. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. <coughs> Very challenging collection to do, so. Especially when you screw it up. 
oh, technique on, on uh, full display there. <laughs> that was not technique. That was not, not how to do it. Oh, you, did, you did great. That's that was a, a that was a fumble. On, uh, that's, a jaw lock. <laughs> that's a challenging kind of coral to collect. Yeah. Yeah, these are these are some of the more challenging corals. Is that enough? Corals. Um, I'm counting the polyps. Um, it looks like we've got. It it'd be maybe. great to get a little bit more if we could, um, but if yeah. okay, awesome. Can we roll that back in. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that guy's Ooh. he's on the move. Oh, actually, or not? Actually, we can just because I'm worried about that. I think it's okay. It's just yeah, get that drawer closed. Yeah, I'll close it. We just got some swirly thruster action there. That. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're good. And then what else do we need? Um, I think we're gonna get a, s a small piece more because we don't. We only have one that's got the branching structure. Okay. Um, I'll and try not to fumble. You know what? It if it happens, that's fine, and we'll still move on. It will be great. Okay. It's still a wonderful sample. There's still many ways that we can get the identification. Oh yeah. So. Did you want a niskin with this too? Yes, we would like a okay. niskin. We'll do that um, next. I think that's on the. There is someone who's interested in these corals. Um, in the in the water around them. Right, we were talking about that on one of the first dives. Yeah, so. that's the other thing is I think there's at least three groups who would be interested in getting um, a, a DNA sample as well, so. Beck, can you pan me over just a bit? Yeah. Good enough. Yep. A lot more okay. soon. Yeah, this is super crumbly. Maybe that big piece right there to the left. There's a little branch. Yeah, the, the, the grip grip blocker's not doing what I want it to do. Do we have a scoop? And would it be possible to try to pick some up, or is that too clumsy? It's a bit clumsy. And I don't even know if we put. Did we put the scoop on? I think it is on the porch. Yep. Yeah, this is, it's not a holding position. It would work better here. Just wants to keep closing when I do that. That's really going to be tricky. I got to hold it without the grip lock, without squeezing it.
Kings, you want Amber? Uh, I'll pull it out real quick. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, is it? Dude, <laughs> man. Oh I think God. it's on the porch. <laughs> is it still on the porch? No, it fell underneath, underneath the porch. Oh, oh wait, wait. Oh, there, oh, oh, there it is. Oh. Yeah, but. How to get it, it still. Oh, yeah. Incredibly delicate and difficult, and a reminder for us yeah, can and, you pan down? Yeah, 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 yeah. and for you. those who are viewing with us, explorers with us. This is uh, it's a gift to, to be able to even try this at all. I'm not gonna see it now. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Yeah, but that's see that's impossible. Yeah. Because then I'm looking backwards, it's like trying to write your name in a mirror. <laughs> like that's not gonna happen. Write your name in a Anything left to this? Pan down? Yep. That's about it until you lose it. It's all broken up now. Oh my God. No, I can't, I can't get it. Robert, I don't think anyone's gonna 
going to blame you for that. That was. Uh, so we'd have to go for a new grabber. No, this is fine. I think we've. Um, my luck, Alan, might come back up on the porch. Mm -hmm. no. I think, yeah, I think, I think nah, it'll be. It's pretty it may <laughs> stay on the porch. It might, might, yeah, we. So you might luck out. No. <laughs> yeah, I think we we can probably move on. Um, that was a valiant effort. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We got some beautiful polyps. Yes. Small. Yeah. Small. In the words of the words of the internet, Robert, my dude, you are playing a claw game with a creature made of bird bones a mile away. Yeah. Please, please don't be hard on yourself. And uh, we concur. That was, uh, was just not meant to be, and uh, and that's okay. That has to be okay. Yeah. Okay. So you still wanted a niskin here too? Oh as right, well. I did forget about the niskin. Yes. Well, that's why I'm here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, all right, first, first, uh, you know, and that that had our full one attention. One thing, great, okay, and then I was like, all right, and now we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah, this game would be great. Thank you so much. Oops, wrong one. I was on the right one. Which ones are left? Is that one and two? Yeah. Looks like. Okay. Yeah, one and two. Excellent. Thank you. I love how in still cam we can see Atalanta. That's not something you get to see very often from uh, Herc. Yeah. I got you. I think so one and two is open still. Nice. You got it. Beautiful. Thank oh. you. Awesome. Wonderful. All right. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, no. Does that need to go in like a basket or something? It's on that magnet right there. See it right there on the Oh, wall. there's a magnet. Okay, yeah. great. I can't tell either. Looks like you're touching it with the smaller edge. Oh, it's touching. 
See if you can let it go without pushing it off, though. There you wow. go. Cool. Cool beans. Kukui, just to confirm, was, were those, but was those samples 054 and 055? That is correct, 054 and 055. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe something special when we only are that one. Yeah. Awesome. All thank right. you so much for yeah. that. Yeah, this Mahalo. is Mahalo. Yeah, thank you. I think we are ready to roll. Yeah. So it was good. Mm -hmm. Bridge now. Ready to rock, too. Yeah. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I think the could we move four zero meters at bearing two one five? Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is awesome. So now I think the goal is to get get to waypoint seven. Yeah, we yep. ju we'll get just here to waypoint five, and then basically c go across the top. Awesome. We see now to waypoint seven. Great. Yeah. And this is looking very similar to what we've seen previously, so that's awesome. We're starting to see a lot more sea stars, though. Yeah. Mm. Front row, uh, you guys have been so busy and so focused, but I, I know this must be leaving an impression on you as well. We'd, we'd love to hear uh, some of your thoughts, some of, the, some of your favorite moments so far, things that have stood out. I have to say, I really like these uh, yellow corals. What I think is that? They're really pretty. What's that? Which one? That right there on the rock. Oh, oh. Yeah, that big oh is that a flatfish? I don't know. That's what I was looking at. Is that a flatfish? Yeah. Wait, where? Yeah, the on the bottom right 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 left hand corner. Where are we? It's right on the bottom left, right here on the corner. Oh, right, right here, right here. There he goes. Right. Oh, oh yeah, oh. that is a little flatfish. Is that a flounder? What is that? Yeah, yeah it's a flounder. It's a type of flounder. Oh, I've never seen one of those before. How cool! Yeah, it's a type of sole. My Connie said you can eat them. Oh, they're delicious. Oh, yeah. Flounder. Uh, flounder We're not going to eat you, buddy. We're not going to yeah. eat you. No, yeah, definitely not. But I barely I just like, saw that. He was going oh. by. It's a nice spot. Zoom in, Amber. It's a good size, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Such, such wild-looking fish. Look at you, buddy. Ooh. Yeah, can you turn the lights off? The lasers, not the lights, I apologize. <laughs> Think he's going to glow? <laughs> it was about to get real dark for a second. Yeah. I wonder if deep sea flounder have uh, bigger eyes. Yeah. So yeah, they cool. are very cool. So for anyone not familiar with um, flounder um, or sole, they, they actually start out usually with eyes on both sides of their heads as larvae and then and then it moves to one side or the other um yeah two eyes on one side if we got a different angle you could see yeah. the other eye there wow. looks so like it's got yeah. a couple dots yeah. on yeah. its back and uh oh that's thank you for showing me the fin i was looking at that's wonderful yeah and a very wow circular fin so yeah, they're pretty, they actually are pretty common, although I was not aware that they are down here at 1,200 meters, but that's pretty awesome. Got to hang out somewhere, I guess. Yeah, great. That's so cool. Oh, it's turning for oh, us. Oh, hi. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's turning wow. Hi, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Highlight. Oh, oh, Do my job. Oh, my gosh. Look at that face. <laughs> they're waving hi to us. <laughs> All of our um, elementary oh, school friends are going to love it. Little, little Mermaid, did they sell flounder down here? Oh, that's great. Yeah. They often ask. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Do they often have that, that tail underneath them, too? Yeah, the pectoral fin, like, yeah, yeah right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the it's it just a too? sideways fish, so you know. Yeah. It's, uh, its pectoral fins are on the top and bottom of its bodies because those are actually the sides. It's <laughs> fascinating how it swims. Yeah. Wow. I've never That's seen That's great. Yeah. Water before. Bye, buddy. In shallower waters, you find them buried in the sand. You often won't even see them. They blend in really well. Yeah. Highly camouflaged. Yeah. yeah 
Oh, Thanks awesome. for the zoom Thank on that. Thank you. Yeah, that was model. great. Amazing. Oh. Good eye. Catalina, there's your fluorescent yellow corals you were telling us about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. They're really cool. Zach, how about you? What's uh, what's been what's been standing out to you as you've been piloting Atalanta and following her along? Um, really, the vastness. Um, like I said before, I, I come from oil and gas, so you know, going from seeing desolate, <laughs> nothing but pipes and mud flats and stuff like that in the wow. Gulf of Mexico to this, it's it's a world of a difference. Like whenever you're in the Gulf, it, it's it's there just there's nothing, almost nothing. And a lot of times, uh, uh, it's just it's just flat and a little bit of some mud ravines and Actually, and the pipe. Some of the most interesting stuff I've seen is in the Gulf. Of yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen anything too interesting. I mean, I, I wish I would, but I've heard some stories that people do see some cool stuff. But every time I've ever gone out, I've never seen anything, and it's just always like, you know, it's kind of boring, mundane. But then come out here, and this is it's amazing. So it's just really just everything. We're ha really happy you're here with us in uh, Papahanaumokuakea. Um, it's been uh, awesome to have you piloting Atalanta and exploring with us. Amber, how about you? As you uh, bring us this awesome video, <laughs> if you yeah. want to wait a minute, you're welcome, yeah, obviously. Amazing. What an amazing fish. Look at that. I know. <laughs> This fish totally living its best life. Mm -hmm. Buddy, you got a beautiful house. Uh, and nosy neighbors. And some nosy <laughs> neighbors, yeah. Nosy neighbors. Awesome. Yep. You're probably about to get yanked on in the second part. Yeah. Right. yeah. We gotta get going. Yep, let's get moving. Yeah. Off we go. Yeah, in the Gulf of Mexico, we you see a lot of brine lakes. Get, oh, that's cool. You actually get waves breaking on the beach underwater. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that is wow. super cool. Just I've, from yeah. The I've seen different. islands, floating islands in a brine lake with waves washing up on the shore. <laughs> <laughs> go surfing. Let's go. Yeah, the Gulf is a pretty cool place geologically. I think they just said the oil rigs tend to stay further up on the shelf where it's flatter. Yeah, speaking of Gulf Coast, we got a Nolens native and now in St. Pete, Florida, the dedicated Gulf Gulf Coaster. Oh yeah. Yeah, one of the unique geologic features of the Gulf that I think is the coolest is the layer of salt, Jurassic salt that comes up through all the younger layers and it's something super characteristic of it. That's awesome. Ties in a lot with oil and gas, actually. Sorry, I just realized our beacons are a bit off here. Catalina, I've been meaning to ask you, what are you studying for your master's program? Okay, so we're going. Uh, Was, what are we you were really quiet, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, is that better? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was asking, uh, what uh, are you studying for your master's program? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm actually looking at features that we call paleo shorelines. Um, and they're on the West Florida Shelf, which is this massive, like, 200-mile-wide portion of the continental shelf that's super low relief. Um, and there are these, it's basically a big carbonate platform. And so these features have been lithified. And so they basically mark where sea level has stood over the past 20 or so thousand years. and. Um, I use multi-beam bathymetry to study these features and um, learn a little bit about the processes that form them and the, t the ages at which they form. So it's, it's been a really interesting project. That sounds really interesting. It's really cool. I think that's the thing that's been standing out to me the most is just the vibrant colors against this dark rock backdrop. So dramatic it's and such a beautiful dramatic. relief, it's like yeah. A painting. Not surprising to a 
to a photographer, videographer's eyes, just uh, seeing these be this beautiful relief, this contrast, incredible colors, the dramatic black backdrop. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Just noticing the the uh, the shifts in my own in my own heart and mind as we go from walking through the portal to then trying to conduct our science, and it's just uh, it's just this incredible ballet, this incredible tension that's uh, kind of shifting shifting focus, taking me in and out of uh, different ways of thinking about the space, and so I'm gonna flip around real quick. It's a yeah. lot of fun, actually. Yeah, there's so many different ways to walk this world. Ew. Getting a bit close there. Wow. Okay, coming up. We're getting two very starkly different views between the two vehicles, too, right now. It shows you just the, the, the rapid, small scale on which we're seeing these communities uh, change. You know, what's advantageous, what's not. Aritagorgia. Yeah, it is always so stunning to see these these communities and how they change by the very small local Oop. localized differences, whether that be topographic or substrate or current. It is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, and so right now we're hoping to um, um, start moving towards the um, the summit a little bit more to try to get an idea of of what one what um, you know characterize the the communities at the summit ah, I was looking for it I could see the shadow before <laughs> I saw the fish that looks like a grenadier um, yeah so it's uh, you know we want to be able to characterize the community at the summit but then also look for um, you know um, any potential anthropogenic disturbances as well so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what these kind of rapid little changes we're seeing here kind of remind me of? It's actually mm. of the Hawaiian Islands themselves. You go from valley to valley, uh, you get um, basically weather. Uh, it's a little different star. valley to valley. Different, uh, you know, there's even like different kinds of like uh, moods or, uh, uh, you know, ways of being from valley to valley too. It's like they're their own little subsets of Honolulu. And I, I've experienced this the most on Oahu, so that's what I really can speak to. Literally, we have uh, endemic species that are found in just uh, one or, or a handful of valleys on Oahu or, or isolated on, on top of Oahu's uh, tallest mountain, uh, mm -hmm. Mauna Kaala. Uh, you'll find species that can't be found anywhere else in the world except those the particular spot. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, you get these just little micro niches and these whole tiny little ecosystems develop and you know, we're seeing some incredible parallels between submarine and terrestrial. Yeah, I love that. love that comparison. And I love thinking about home. A long way from home, mm -hmm. this far out in Papahanaumokuakea, but in some ways uh, just deeper into home, you know, it's really right a, at home. Really Very a true. special. Yeah, you know, whenever I'm able to come and enter into these kaiuli, these ocean spaces. I feel so privileged to be able to see the many forms and faces of Kanaloa. Whether that's, you know, the swells on the surface, the koekea um, bird that, you know, soars right above uh, 
the waves or in the deep kaiuli in these depths where we see the contrast of this dark pohaku yep. and all of these sponges and papai crabs and ia. Beautiful. Otherworldly. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Is that another branching black coral? Okay. Um, pull up. <laughs> yeah, pull up. I, th I think there have been several black corals here. Yeah. But we don't need to zoom. We've already seen them, so we can keep moving. Oh, okay. So Val, quick question about um, in terms of like prioritizing things for this um, this dive. So they want to get to like waypoint seven, right? Because um, we're get we're kind of climbing in just about to get where it starts to flatten out quite a bit. Um, do you know when we get there? Is the priority to survey for those um, the marks like yes. the trolling marks? It is okay. Yep. All right, so maybe, because I've been doing jumps, so we can make sure to get good looks at everything. Do we want to mm -hmm. just maybe track a line in the in that direction once we get there? So we um, can just kind of maintain steady, or would you all prefer to keep doing jumps? So I think once we get on top, um, we're going to end up seeing a lot of a lot of sedimentation and uh, fewer rock outcrops. So um, okay. if, if we keep jumping, we can do longer ones. But um, let's let's kind of plan a track okay. uh, uh, inward okay. uh, toward the summit. and. Uh, that way with longer jumps, uh, just in case we see something, we still have a, a decent sure. chance of stopping. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. We are moving now. Excellent. But I will plan to keep doing that as we go. Hey, Dr. Val, are these Hyalo glasslight um, deposits over here? Um, hard to tell. It doesn't really look like it, but we might be seeing maybe some change in the sediment. I'm not. I'm not really sure. It looks like it might be loose sediment, so I'm leaning toward no on hyaloclastite. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, one of the things that we're not sure about with the uh, trawling marks that we're looking for is where exactly they may start. Sure. Yeah, we just won't know until we get up there. Okay. Oh, could we get the laser lights back on now that... Yeah, thank thank you. you. Watching them swim. 
I love watching squat lobsters swim. Um. These sponges are pretty magnificent. <laughs> they really are. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Mm, they mean, look like giant calla lilies. You guys know calla lilies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I see where you're what coming is, from with that. What is? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just mm -hmm. you know, we're all just kind of sitting here taking this in. Mm -hmm. It's pretty magnificent. Yeah, I did realize all of a sudden, I was like, oh, we're all just staring at the beauty in front of us. <laughs> That's OK. We don't always have to fill that space. It's the best sometimes, kind of party. Sometimes that space fills itself. Ah, beautifully said. Mm. Pretty strong current coming over the side here. Mm. Oh, it makes mm -hmm. sense. Harder to drive up. Mm. So I was looking at this, I was reminded that uh, just a week away, um, the sun will follow the path of the equator, and, uh, and we'll experience the equinox here in Papahanaumokuakea and That's uh, right. Orion's, oh, Orion's wow. belt will, uh, wow. Nakao so will, uh, will rise wow. um, as the sun is setting, yeah. and uh, we'll have that uh, that pointer um, to mark uh, to mark that point of the equinox to mark that al almost perfect east mm -hmm. wow. um, in, the, in the night sky, used by many of our uh, voyaging teachers and friends. Um, wow! And uh, I'm excited to go look for that on the on the eastern horizon after watch tonight. For sure, yeah. I'm pretty amazed at. The density of uh, these large sponges here, Scorpio. Orion's Orion's belt is. Uh, Nakiki. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nakiki. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Nakiki. It speaks to. Uh, Nakiki. A, uh, it's a children's mm -hmm. game actually, um, that they play with a string. Yeah. And there's a whole modelo behind it, but. Essentially, it, you make a cradle with the with a rope in your hand, and uh -huh. when you draw, I forget uh -huh. um, the particular names of the stars, but you get Orion's belt, and you get I think like two two other stars, one on each side, and you you draw lines from that, and then that is what creates Heihio Nakiki, I believe. Yeah, well, that's so. cool. Those three stars together also point to uh, Sirius, the brightest, uh, I don't know the Hawaiian name, but it's the brightest uh, star in the night sky. And Is it Ma'a? Uh -uh? Oh, Ma'a, uh -uh. that would make sense. And then... Lots uh, to learn. There's yeah. Kyoli Yokonai Kalaba, I think. Um, 
the more southern star that, that keeps changing lights. Yeah. Oh, Kukui, little Voyager, navigator yeah. over there. Dropping some astronomy here. <laughs> Absolutely love it. I, I was uh, blessed to be able to uh, um, kind of learn from Auntie Kala um, Babayan Tanaka. Nice. And oh, her father, nice. um, yeah. Uncle Kalapa. Uncle Chad, amazing. So I just wanted to uplift their names, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here either. Oh, oh we miss you. Kapena Kalapa, we miss you. But he's here, here with us. Oh, amazing. Yeah, awesome to think of. Uh, the correlations between the depths of Kaiuli and uh, the depths of the universe and the night sky and and all of the knowledge in between that belong to the ancestors and because of them belongs to us, belongs to all future generations. And it's always one of my favorite times to watch. I love it in here with you guys, but it's uh, right at midnight and getting to head up to the upper deck and have a little peek at uh, what the sky wants to reveal. Yeah. 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 It looked like it cleared up a little bit after being kind of kind of cloudy and overcast for a lot of the day. At least as far as I could tell. Yeah, we had some gentle squalls rolling through, and not a lot of wind, but a little bit, and and uh, brought some rain, some rainbows this morning. But. Uh, did start to clear up right around sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, lo I love rainy mornings, though. It was such a beautiful morning. You can't have sun every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having those extremes makes you appreciate the, you know, the other extreme all that much more Absolutely. and everything in between. Well, yeah. and I mean, we get so much from the rain, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, was well, such a gift. Huh? Mm -hmm. Rain is uh, needed. Absolutely. Needed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wonder if any of these guys ever want to go see the stars down here in the <laughs> depths of Kaiuli. Just wish, you know. They do in their own way with <laughs> bioluminescence. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Oh, absolutely. And they feel it. They feel yeah, uh, they, feel they feel the spinning of the planet in, in ways we cannot. They feel mm -hmm. uh, they feel the surging of the ti of the tides and gravity pulling on them like it's pulling on us. And then they feel it in ways that we've forgotten how to do it a lot of the time. So yeah, amazing. Yeah, it looks like we're about to start. Uh, encountering uh, some gentler slopes. And with that, we'll see what um, changes come with that, mm -hmm. if any. Dr. Val's looking at the cool topographical map of the seamount that was uh, generated by uh, Catalina and the mapping team, um, everyone on the mapping team to help us plan this dive and, and, and map this seamount for the first time. and. Um, if you know topographical maps, it's cool. As you as you get to gentler slopes, the lines on the topical, topographical map get further and further apart. Mm -hmm. And so we can see uh, as we climb this ridge that uh, we're nearing nearing the summit, and the slope is easing off. Nice to be able to anticipate something. We don't know what we're going to yeah. see as we move up that gentle slope, but uh, we sort of know what the what the shape will look like. Yeah, we know there's going to be some sort of a change coming up soon. Yeah. Likely will have an effect on currents, and maybe we'll see some of these biological communities shift in some ways. Always fun to watch. We have, we still have uh, nearly two hours left to enjoy this. Hey, buddy. And uh, excited to get up to the summit and see uh, see what it's like it's almost just like when you're going on a hike on Oahu and you just can't wait to get up to the top of the ridge and look across at that view the other side 
have that same sort of sense of anticipation. If you really love topographical maps, you could uh, try to zoom in on camera three. Use a magnifying glass and you can see the same one Dr. Val's oh, I can show you. looking at. Oh, and the wizard, the wizard is, uh, that's Amber. She's, she's going to be able to, to give us a topographical map. Picture of the seamount there. This is the screen that uh, that we're using. One of many screens the navigation team and bridge are using and, and uh, scientists and ROV pilots are using to track and, and plan our jumps. You guys, you've heard, uh, heard Catalina calling for those jumps and giving a heading and a distance. That's, um, that's for ship movements at the surface and has to do that in coordination with the ROV pilots Robert and, and Zach to move the ROVs safely, keep them in great position so that Amber can then get these amazing shots. So Bring them all to you. Pages, auto X, y. Yeah, speaking of which, we are uh, currently moving the ship in Atalanta forward so that Hurt can get a little more um, slack in the tether. Every role in the control van has its own sort of set of data that it has to be taking in and monitoring and considering all the time and entering new information, communicating with different uh, different team members. Uh, and it's one of the most fun things to watch as, uh, um, as the team thrives. Not always easy. There's tense moments. There's challenges. There's things don't always work the way they're supposed to. Sometimes I get a little grumpy, usually because I'm hangry. And people keep talking about lunch or dinner or <laughs> ice cream sundaes or something. Uh, but uh, all in all, you know, do it with aloha. Do it with uh, kindness and, and deep respect and admiration for one another. I certainly admire all of you a great deal and, uh, and look forward to being lifelong friends if you'll have me. Um, hopefully get to come out exploring it together again on the Nautilus. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Amber, you made a lot of friends and fans on the internet. They say, yes, finally maps, thank you. <laughs> but you can never make everyone happy. They immediately say, could you zoom in a little bit more? <laughs> so uh, we love you, those I of you too. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you tuning in, we absolutely love you, and sometimes you're a bit ridiculous. <laughs> hey, maps are a wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I spend way too much time, way more than I should, uh, scrolling around on Google Maps, Google Earth, just, you know, taking yeah. in structures, absolutely. features, places, understanding the seafloor. And you can see uh, kind of the path that that we're taking and just the having to carefully navigate the, the, the steep terrain um, oh, yeah. when those lines are really close together it just indicates the, the incline yeah what a what a what a wall that was uh yeah. the the team that that planned and prepared for this dive they just picked just the most outrageous route up this uh, beautiful <laughs> mountain and i love it i yeah. absolutely love it that was kind of the plan <laughs> We wanted to see some structural geology. It was, you're right. <laughs> and we, we I mean, it. mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> no, getting Thank to witness this uh, plumbing uh, of the volcano, of this ancient volcano. I mean, we'd, we'd e so easily mesmerized by, uh, by the life here, the abundance of life. But these pohaku carry deep mana. Um, they're, they're foundational to this story. None of this would be here without that part of the story. And it's, um, it's beautiful in ways that I wish I could fully comprehend. But it runs so deep in time. Uh, you have to have a mind like Dr. Val. You have to be willing to be dedicated and, and study the isotopic behavior 
if, if you will, of uh, all of these rocks. Geochemistry, just unbelievable um, what it takes to reveal this story, but um, what a cool outcome. I love, I love getting to slowly learn. It's really a privilege. almost slightly, slightly reminiscent of the hemichorallium dive. Not quite as dense and a lot more yellow. Yeah. It just, it, yeah, this, it, it's apparently just such an incredible place for all of these colonies to just thrive. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, I think part of it too is the fact that we are looking at these very steep ridges and, the, and these sections where the currents are just ripping through so uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah I am noticing some current here uh, yes yeah just looking well. at the uh, marine snow mm -hmm. yeah this is uh, it's pretty interesting we've got several different sponges and, and analopsomia here um, And we've also, it looks like we've got several um, ophiroids and maybe a brisingid. Um. Yeah, and you can see some of that shiny, um, yeah, shiny the crust. manganese crust. Yeah, some of the yeah. shiny crust Very again. Polished. It looks like uh, these rocks last moved many tens of millions of years ago because it looks like wow. they're all pretty firmly uh, stuck to the substrate mm -hmm. by that manganese. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, last year we, we tried to see if, you know, sometimes when you get a little bit of sedimentation on uh, uh, surfaces like these, um, that covers up uh, you know, the intersection between a cobble and the substrate, and it can make it look like uh, you have some loose rubble that you can pick up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, deceptive. There's a unit of a sea star. <laughs> a unit. Oh, yeah. An absolute unit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the diversity here, the many faces of Kanaloa, as Mahina pointed out, just absolutely incredible. And and, um, and yeah, oh, wow. mu must have heard you. Must have heard you, uh, Val and Catalina, that this was showing off its best fluorescent yellow, neon yellow for you guys. I cannot wait to learn the seamount's name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So many possibilities. I know. I wish I could sit in the room when uh, friends were, were talking through all of the mo'olilo, all of the kauna, yeah. many layers of this experience in order to uh, reveal just the right name. It's such a sacred moment in, in uh, Hawaiian cultural practice, the, the act of naming, whether you're naming a child or a place or a building or a canoe. Yeah. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful moment, and uh, this seamount, I'm sure, is going to get uh, get the attention that it deserves. I hope this makes the news back home. This is mm -hmm. some of these some of these dives. It's, uh, I just want everybody to be able to to realize what's out here. Yeah. yeah the more we share, the more we kind of understand our connection with this planet just how how life finds a way wherever wherever there's a chance you know and, um there there's some astronomers who uh, uh and biologists like astrobiologists who suspect that if the conditions are right it may well be that life will form basically you you, you uh you give it the chance to and it might and we haven't been able to prove that yet but it's it's a very poetic thing to think about 
just how stubborn <laughs> all of us living critters are at surviving and finding ways to not just survive but thrive. Amazing. I, I love the, the stories um, that come out about uh, you know various species that will change gender in order to continue uh, propagating life. There are um, stories of you know uh, animals in enclosures somehow reproducing without uh, having access to uh, uh, to a partner for sexual reproduction. So it's and it, it, those stories always blow my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's. Uh, Mm -hmm. Life really does just want to want to flourish. This is yeah. impressive. We've seen several of these fish. Um, oh, I honestly thought it was just the same. Oh, I thought it was yeah, just I kind of was thinking it was the same around. one, but I think there's been several actually. I think we're we seeing just had several two in one screen too. Yeah, that's interesting. Is we're at no, we're still at eleven fifty. We're still yeah, we're working our way. Yeah, we've seen a few a few fish, and it's hard to say if that's just you know, just random uh, occurrences along the track that we're making, or if uh, you know maybe we'll see an uptick in the density of fish here pretty soon. Yeah, don't know yet, but we'll see. If you're watching the live stream, you can go back just about four hours and. Uh have a look at what was just a stunning encounter with a massive Dumbo octopus. That was pretty special. Those of us on yeah. watch now, we're taking it in. I heard there, the there was a Dumbo earlier in the day too, after yeah. we got off watch. A couple, yeah, a couple. One was uh, generously feeding some crab friends. <laughs> Another one swimming beautifully. Pretty amazing, three. Three just in the span of, uh, you know, a few hundred meters that we've traveled. Pretty remarkable. One of Kanaloa's favorite forms. Mm -hmm. hey. Some viewers remembering those uh, those Paragorgia corals, those massive Paragorgia corals that we saw. That was uh, that was pretty mind blowing earlier in the dive. Oh, absolutely. You know, we um, in the lounge. I was watching some of them, and some of the bases of those looked almost 30, 30 centimeters. Three of these, uh, you know. Three of the, so those laser lights there are 10 centimeters apart. So three of those across the very base of them. So very thick around. And you know, we did some, some quick math with uh, a quickly found, um, you know, growth rate. Um, and you know, some of those could be over 200 years old. Um, wow. You know, and, and you just think about the, the lives they lead at the bottom of the seafloor, what they've seen. Um, it's pretty amazing to think about. Um, those were, those are. It's always, it's always really amazing to see very large corals. I mean, even these corals here are probably several years old. Um, and it's, it's always really interesting to think about. You know, there's some black corals. Um, I think that that are over a thousand years old. Um, amazing. I mean, think about how much. Even the seafloor has changed in that amount of time. Uh, it's it's pretty astonishing. So um, yeah, and and then you know the how how many 
you know, the communities that they're hosting, right? How many generations of squat lobsters have grown up in that one massive paragorgid? How many ophiroids and brisingids and um, anemones, shrimps? You know, there's there's entire, you know, there could be entire generations of multi-generational yeah. communities. I yeah. love it. I mean, it's, it's Now amazing. I gotta look up the life cycle and lifespan of a squat lobster. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just need, please, now I need to know. Please let me know what you find out. It would be amazing. You know, it's, um, <laughs> we, we see only a snapshot here. Um, just a pinpoint in the temporal and spatial and uh, not spatial. Sp